Okay, so often in probability, especially with two-way tables, you're going to encounter what are called conditional probabilities. So there's going to be some condition. And what that usually means, at least in a two-way table, is that you're going to be restricted to a row, a row or a column. So in the first one here, it says a randomly selected student is majoring in engineering. And that is our condition. We know they're majoring in engineering. That, that's going to change our probability. What is the probability that the student is in marching band? So I'm going to find the answer to that and indicate how I got it. So we know they're in engineering, and we know we want to know the probability is that they're in the marching band. So given that they're in engineering, we're now restricted by the row. We want to know what the probability is that they're in marching band, right? So um, here, that's going to be based on this row. We know they're engineering major, and we know 40 of them are in marching band. So it's going to be 40 out of all the engineering majors, not out of the total down here, right? It's out of 175. So 40 out of 175 would be our answer to this problem. So I'm going to go down, and I'm just going to put 40 out of 175, and I'm going to say that it's a row condition. Right, just because of the way the table was set up. Next, a randomly selected student is not in marching band. What is the probability that this student is majoring in engineering? So we know they're not in marching band. Okay, so that means, we look for this here, they're not in the marching band, so we are restricted to this column. That's our conditional probability. Let me make that a little bit cleaner. We're in this column right here. And what is the probability that they are an engineering major? Well, there are how many? There are 135 out of 645, right? That would be our answer here. Oops, sorry. that's 135 out of 645. And this would be a column condition because because not being in the marching band was a column heading. That's it. You can clearly ta turn the table and get it to be a row condition, but the way it was set up, it would be a column condition. Okay, next. Based on the two-way frequency table, determine the following conditional probabilities. A random, a random student is selected. Uh, a random student is majoring in engineering. What is the probability that they're in marching band? So... I think we have this answer already, right? A randomly selected student is majoring in engineering. What is the probability that this student is in the marching band? What's well, 40 out of 175, which we had before. So it's a repeat question. And then a randomly selected student is not majoring in engineering. Okay, so this one's different. They're not majoring in engineering. What is the probability that this student is in the marching band? Okay. So they're not majoring. Let me clear off some of this stuff. Actually, I don't know if I can without erasing it. Let's just go with it. They're not in the marching band. And so this column. What is the probability? Sorry, I'm going to scroll down. They're not majoring in engineering. What is the probability that they're in the marching band? Okay, so I had the wrong one. It's not a column. It's this one right here. So out of 630 students, there are 510 that are not in the marching band. And there are 120 that are in the marching band. So let's go back here. So there were 120 students in the marching band, given that we know they're not majoring in engineering. And there were 630 in total. So that's it. That's our probability. And you can write that as a decimal. All right, so we've got different conditional probabilities here, and they certainly lead to rows or columns. All right, hope that helps.